Guys, welcome back to the channel. Our Christmas tree is here. We've got to decorate our Christmas tree. Hopefully you've been doing good over the weekend. Today is Monday and we have a special video today. It is a review of the new SkyZone 04X goggles. We're gonna talk about those today. We're gonna to test them out. And from a pilot's perspective, I'm gonna give you an honest opinion about them, what I feel about them versus my original O3s that I've been using for about nine years now, um, eight years maybe on the channel. So I'm pretty excited to just give a little quick comparison of those and also the original O4Xs. Uh, we'll show you a little bit of uh, comparison to both those goggles as well. And uh, talk about why, you know, you might want to go analog versus HD. Um, the buy-in price point on the O4X, uh, the brand new ones are you know, pretty, you know, probably in the $400 price range. I'll get you an exact price on them in the review. But um, we also have a new monitor to check out as well. And the monitor is called the M4, I believe. Um, box is sitting over there, M5. We're going to open up the box together, and we're going to look at everything that is included inside the O4X box um, for the goggles and for their new monitor. So uh, if you've never flown with a monitor before, it's kind of nice to have a little monitor with you when you go fly. If the Karens walk up, you have something to show them and like, hey, look how cool this is. Um, it's like you're sitting in the cockpit flying along inside this little aircraft. It's really a lot of fun and it's not nefarious. You know, we're not doing anything wrong. We're actually making art in my opinion. And that's how I feel that FPVA is from our perspective. It's just another tool for art. Um, and my fuel for art, usually in the morning, is my first morning cup of coffee. First, second, third, of course, but still got that bag of Sessioni, um, however you say that. But it has a chocolatey flavor. It's a dark roast, 100%. Uh, Ara Arabica? How the hell do you say that? Arabica, Arabica, I don't freaking know. Um, but uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, hop over to the bench. And let me show you the O4X is on the bench. Uh, I returned to Innocence today on the channel. Analog FPV. All right, guys, welcome to the bench and welcome to the quick unboxing and laid back review of the SkyZone 04X Pros. They're $500. Um, just looking on the website, they already have a five star review, which is kind of good. I think they're on sale right now. They were $599. It looks like they marked them down $100. Um, but what you're looking at right now on the bench is my SkyZone 030s. And these are my most used analog FPV goggles in the history of this channel uh, coming up on 10 years. These things are still working. They have 16 by nine ratio. Um, and I don't believe they support 4.3, uh, if I remember correct, but I never switch them out. They also run like two to six S. Um, they do not have OLED on these, but most of the new generation FPV goggles have OLED. Um, and the O4X Pros that I have here, they absolutely support OLED. But one of the biggest reasons that a lot of people like SkyZone is that they have really good DVR. I arguably for a long time, actually not even arguably, community wise, people will tell you that the DVR looks better than the Fat Sharks. Um, Fat Shark DVR for a long time has not really been all that great. So one of the biggest, I guess one of the biggest um, upgrades for this pair of goggles versus the O4X is the refresh rate is 100 hertz on this. Also, uh, that's at, at uh, 720p on the resolution. And then 1080p resolution is 60 hertz. Um, so 100 frames per second on these. So if you're somebody who's FPV racing uh, or you want ultra fast a goggle response refresh rate for um, like FPV freestyle, th this is gonna be pretty cool. So great pair of goggles for that. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, open these up so you guys can see what's inside the box and I'm still working on that third cup of coffee over there coming right along and let's uh, zoom in a little bit here for you so you can see what's the deal here first time opening these up 
nothing like a commando knife to open up uh, some goggles, right? So first of all, we got our customer service card here. And if you don't want to watch the unboxing part, you can um, scroll ahead in this video and, and check out the, the flight test. We're going to do a flight test coming up with a Whoop. This is the user manual. And this looks like the goggles themselves inside their own box. That's kind of cool. And then this probably are XT60 and cables and things. Let's open up the goggles first. Let's see. So this, this is your case and almost pretty much identical to the O4X case. Um, it has a little carabiner on the side there. Zipper opens them up. Okay, right away I've got some 3M faceplate Velcro there for Velcroing on either one of these. Uh, one of them is kind of a spongy foam, and then this one's kind of a, a covered plastic foam here. So I, I kind of prefer these. These feel nice. These feel a little nicer than these, but it just depends on what you like better. So now let me go ahead and take out the goggles. I got the black version, and I don't know that they have other color versions uh, available. It, it looks like they had matte white, red, and gray on the website, but they're all grayed out at the moment. So they come sealed, which is cool. It keeps the dust off of them if they're sitting around in the warehouse waiting for you to buy them. All right, let's go ahead and get into these. I don't see a lot of cosmetic difference here, but maybe they've made some changes here. This is the Skyzone strap, another, this is your faceplate here. It's actually second faceplate. So this, this faceplate's already on, and you're gonna take your Velcro here, and you're gonna put it on, but we're gonna remove this strap real quick. They just come right off like that, so it's kind of cool. It's pretty quick. So this Velcro just kind of goes around the inside of the faceplate here. And this lets us like take the uh, switch out the faceplates if we want to. Just try to get dead center there. And push your finger all the way around. And this is, gets tricky inside the nose part sometimes. Just make sure that doesn't stick out too much where your nose is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and push those down all the way around. That's looking good. Okay, that was easy. So now we can put on either one of the face plate, the foam plates here. I think I'm going to use this one. I like these. So those just stick right on. And it's a good idea to, to you know, sanitize these every, I mean, some people do it every few months or so. This kind of keeps the bacteria off your face if you're sweating. And we have two control switches here, and you've got one on this side for this module bay. So you have a module bay over here. This also has a built-in fan here to support more cooling um, for the OLED, the high these, these operate a little hotter than those standard uh, LED screens like we had originally on the O3Os. So we didn't need an extra fan there, but apparently the website does, says it has an extra fan um, for that module bay. And over here we have the steady view. This is a steady view 3.3 uh, 3 .3 or something like that. There's the two antenna O4X Pro, it says on the side. We've got our jog wheel and selection button there. This pushes down, scrolls back and forth. Doesn't have any type of joystick style control like the DJI goggles have, but um, apparently they stopped using the Batman logo <laughs> like they did. I swear it looks just like the Batman logo on the original ones. I always like that. Uh, but the new ones have just what appears to be a, it's plastic. I thought maybe it was CNC aluminum, but it feels like plastic. And that's your, uh, your additional OLED fan there. So now to put these back on, you're just gonna push them through that slot. You got the power button on the right hand side too. And 
and I might need to just take this faceplate off sometimes. The faceplate just pops right off like this. And these goggles support 2 to 6S also. So a 2 to 6S battery you can power these guys with. Just gonna move, move that out of the way. It's nice for me to have the battery in my pocket. That's where I like to have my battery. Um, with the, the extension cable. And that should be here. I'm not gonna put that on for now because it's kinda hard to do. I'm reaching around the camera, the tripod. So you get two stick antennas, it looks like, um, for your steady view module here and I would suggest update upgrading those to um, something like an AX2 right hand circular polarized long range antenna that's what I would probably do there but this will get you started we have all records we have USB-C cable here which is cool that's new we have our RCA cables this is our battery cable again a 2 to 6s is pretty good and that's pretty much the standard on the O4X series goggles. They've been updated that for audio cable as well. And we also have HDMI on these, HDMI in here. And we have interpupillary uh, distance settings. Uh, this will, that just basically means these screens can be moved horizontally, IPD. And then they also have a focal range, and the focal range for people that need glasses is from negative two to positive six here. So if you wear glasses, you know, these are on par with some of the most expensive goggles out there. Um, and likely you might not have to wear your glasses with these, but they do make uh, diopters as well that you can have and put inserted in, in here with these slots. And now where's our faceplate at? Let's go ahead and slap our faceplate back on this one. I'm going to do that for now. Maybe I'll just take this other side off. Uh, I'm going to put these back on when I do the flight test coming up. But this cable appears to be exactly the same cable that we had before with the O3Os. Nothing's changed there. Um, both XT60 the barrel connector looks absolutely the same. And that plugs in just below the power button. And also on the bottom, we have a few different things here. We have your micro SD card for your DVR, HDMI in, like we talked about before, our headphone jack, AV, HT out, and a USB-C cable there. So um, that's kind of cool. And then our DC in there, as well as some vents on the bottom. We got some venting here for this module. And you can take this module out, um, and you can pop this one out as well. But it's nice they have selection button and jog wheel on both sides for each module should you need to make any changes to your module. So let's go ahead and get a little deeper into this. Um, I know some of you guys want to hear some kind of comparison between the O4X or you know something like the O4X uh, or the O4s. Mm, good coffee. Now these are OLEDs, and all the way since the O4Os and the O4X uh, version 2s, they're all OLED. Um, but the biggest difference for, for this pair of goggles is that they're 1920 by 1080 resolution. Um, and the field of view on these is 52 degrees versus 46 on the O4X V2s and 38 degrees field of view on the O4Os. Um, so they have a little wider field of view on these. They're also changeable from 4.3 to 16 by 9. Um, that's all of those different goggles. And all of those goggles that I mentioned in, in the 4 series, they're all um, 2 to 6S LiPo supported uh, with an XT60. And you can use any battery, which is great. Um, you don't have to use a proprietary DJI battery on these, which I like a lot. Um, and I, I mentioned before, um, the refresh rate is 100 hertz, um, which is really, really good, which is which is great, uh, 60 hertz on 720p and 100 hertz on 1080p resolution. So 
Um, that's freaking awesome. They have 10 languages inside the menus you can change to, which helps out a lot. Um, it has a three axis accelerometer inside and a three axis gyroscope. So um, that's for head tracking. So you can use head tracking in these as well. And it supports 5.8. And so, you know, you can swap this out if you want. 5.8 gigahertz um, is what these goggles are set to. And I mentioned the IPD earlier, and I didn't tell you the range. And the range is from 58 to 78 millimeters. Um, so that's uh, a pretty good range for these goggles. And the new OLED screens have different tuning presets that you can change the screen brightness to. Um, you can change it from standard to bright to soft to vivid. And a lot of times I change mine to vivid. It just seems to help with the color pop and make them look a little more like an HD stream. Um, some of the high res analog cameras nowadays, like they're so good that they, they almost, they're almost on par with like an HD camera, which is um, kind of amazing. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the M5 monitor. Now you can see what is being transmitted to the goggles over here inside this monitor. And I will say, and it's always nice to have a monitor with you in case, you know, someone wants to take a ride along with you. You can just plug in an extra battery here to your XT60 lead. Um, that's kind of nice to be able to show new people that just happen to walk by while you're flying. That way, you know, they know you're not doing anything weird. Uh, we have all of our OSD across the bottom. Um, it does have a 900 luminance um, brightness LCD. Um, it, it is a resolution of 800 by 480. And the receiver in here is a steady view fusion receiver. Um, and it's also changeable between English and Chinese. It has up to 6S power and it supports an 18650 Lion in the back. Um, I'm more likely to use the barrel connector here, but I also like that we have the menu button here and it has the same type of jog wheel as the O4X Pro has, which is kind of cool. And we have two antennas up top, which I would probably update. We also have venting here. This jog wheel can also be a selection button and we have record button here, which I would take a red paint marker and just put a red dot on top of that button so you know what your record button is. We have SD card support here and over here on this side we have USB-C input, which is kind of cool for firmware updates or hopefully maybe powering from something like a power bank. And we have our DC connector there uh, and as far as the power goes from 6.5 volt looks like all the way up to 25.2 volt or, or USB-C at 5 volt and again the 18650 Lion, a single Lion in the back this snaps off and you put one in there which I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, with the 18650 if you use a 3000 milliamp it says you're going to get about an hour and a half runtime so that's why I would probably use um, a 4S 3000 milliamp pack like this one because that's just going to really extend your flight time um, if you're running this for long periods of time, that'll be a lot nicer for you. Now on the back, if you press that M button, press it again, it'll take you to the settings. Um, inside you can change the mode from RF normal. You can change it to racing, AV input, as well as playback here. Um, and U-Disc looks like, and I'm gonna leave this to RF normal, so that's why we mostly fly. Go down one, you can change the image settings here. Um, and this image setting, if we go in there, you can change it from standard. Uh, like I was saying before, it has presets on here, bright, vivid, and soft. I kind of like uh, the standard, and I, I really like the vivid because it brings up the color a lot here. It's kind of hard to see with our camera, uh, but we're gonna change the brightness as well, so that will be a little easier for you um, to actually see what's going on here. I had to turn the brightness way down see if I can change that doesn't want to let me do that let's see let's go down to display and we change the luminance um, all the way down to like one for you to be able to see that earlier and when I unplug this and plug it back in the luminance changed back to five so um, one thing to think about there we have OSD time timeout uh, three seconds we can turn that off if we want OSD position and I might actually um, change that to about 10 seconds there um, since sometimes that's this is what we're talking about as far as the osd not the quads osd osd position osd transparency we can change that that'd be kind of cool and that's actually the, the bar across the top and the bar across the top if you don't know that is your main battery to your monitor 
we have over on the right hand side signal strength what channel we're on and what preset we're on as far as our flight preset it's RF normal and it shows no SD cards so you'll see kind of an X over top of a video camera and aspect ratio 43 let's go ahead and change that to 16 by 9 because that's what this quad is set up to do display display time um, we don't really need that one but you could display display time which is kind of cool so return and that takes us to DVR settings as well cyclic record on or off auto video length record audio that's kind of cool timestamp you can turn that on if you want turn that off or format your SD card. It's kind of cool. I recommend doing that if you put a brand new one in there. Um, and we have system settings, power supply DC in, so you can change that to 2S, 3S, 4S, and mine's set to 4S. So it has a current battery uh, voltage displayed at 15.8 volt in that top corner. I'm gonna leave that on 4S. I use 4S batteries most of the time for my goggles and um, my monitors. Voltage calibration, 0.7 volt, RSSI, no, language, date and time, that's cool, we can go in there and change that, we can change the fan speed, so if it's a hot summer day, we can turn it up, it's in the middle of the winter, you can turn it down, uh, I'm just going to turn it down to about 5 there, beeps, I'm going to turn the beeps off, because I don't like the beeps, um, the beeps are just going to let you know you left it on, factory settings, no, we can do redo the factory setting, VRX, firmware upgrade, DVR, firmware upgrade so it has both VRX firmware upgrade and DVR firmware upgrade that's pretty cool we can check our firmware version by clicking on that and it shows us MF5 there firmware 1.1.1 it's like one of the first versions here click that again and that'll take us out and so then you know the navigation in the menus is it seems to be pretty easy and it's just really nice to have one of these monitors um, and let me let me go to the website real quick um, and just just double check on this price on the m5 monitor i'm going to type m5 here and this monitor with dvr is 99 dollars um, so that's what they're saying the price of this is so depends on you know what you'd like to get as far as monitor uh, I'm, I'm saying i'm guessing this is about a four and a half inch to five inch monitor um, but it has a built-in steady view receiver, which is kind of nice. And yeah, it has an auto search on there as well. So if you don't want to auto search, it has channels A through L, um, or channels one through eight and bands A through L, which is kind of cool. I don't see L that often. Resolution 800 by 480. And again, it's only going to get you an hour and a half with an 18650, but um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, the ana antenna, it does say, is left-hand circular polarized, um, which is interesting to me because most of our quads are running on analog at right-hand circular polarized, but it will still pick up a right-hand circular polarized uh, antenna feed. So um, that's what this Ishin Wizard is pumping out, I believe. Yep. RHCP there. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of flying. Um, and just to double check here. Yeah. Super bright screens on the OLEDs here, but I'm going to give you a real time review of what I think about these brand new goggles. Let's go ahead and do a little flying together. All right, guys, we're going to fly in the backyard right now. And I have a little 2S quad. We're just going to fire this up. And. Uh, yeah, we're going to do some flying. One thing that you need to know is that when you have an SD card in these goggles, go ahead and format it to FAT32 um, and then put it in your goggles and then it'll recognize it. Uh, I use the SanDisk Extreme cards. So we're on here and to start recording, it's not going to start recording or let you push the record button until the signal comes to the band in the channel that you're on. So go ahead and uh, search your channel. Once you get on your channel, sometimes it'll auto record. You can also set up to do that. So I'm gonna set the little quad down and see if we're in. Nope, no, nope, we're not on the right channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch. Press once, press again. I'm on F5. Let's see, I might be on F6. Just gonna double check. No, it looks like F5. 
there's a little bit of signal breakup, but there's also some bands in the channel here um, from this quad setup. So I'm going to go ahead and press the record button. Now I'm recording and so let's do some real time flying and test out the sky zones with the stock antenna back in the backyard because I feel like this is going to be a better test. I don't know why this quad just stripped out. Okay. Oh yeah, I know why. Props are hitting the battery cable. Okay. Let's go ahead and take off. Make sure I'm recording. You can press the record button again and that will uh, show you if you're actually recording. I always do that with SkyZone goggles. Once I press record, I press again. So you see some horizontal lines. That's partially due to this quad, but right now it looks like I could use better antennas. Some breakup. It's, you know, it's kind of expected with the analog signal, but let's go up a little bit here, a little higher. I'm also underneath the porch. Maybe I should stand out underneath the porch, but it really shouldn't matter. This distance, everything should be crystal clear. So we're just going to come back in, grab a new battery. See how it clears up a lot right here? That's how it should look all the way in the backyard, no problem. So once I get out past like the grapevine right there, it starts to break up right here. So we could either try a new quad or maybe switch out the stock antennas. Stick antennas always kind of suck, to be honest. You want to be using something like a patch antenna and uh, some kind of tall antenna. So let's go ahead now, let's switch out to my tall long range luminaire antenna and uh, my TBS antenna on my other goggles. Here we go. All right guys, I switched out to some proper antennas now. I took the stick antennas off. This is the luminaire long range antenna and one of the TBS antennas uh, from years ago. I'm gonna go ahead and press record now. And I may have to walk over like away from uh, the camera a little bit just to get out to the edge over here so I'm not under the overhang. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, I'm going to stand out here a little bit. And we'll see how this works out. So I'm going to go ahead and take off. So there's a little bit of breakup. All right, now I'm in acro mode, which feels a lot better. So a lot of this has to do with antennas, really like you should just get rid of the stick antennas immediately and it's already a little bit better, but it's about, it's about what I'm expecting as far as analog like reception goes. This quad's also on 25 milliwatt. So if you want to crank something up to like 200 or 400, you're, you're going to look a lot better. It's going to go up, but already like when I was going higher earlier, like I was having tons of breakup. I couldn't go up very high. A little bit of prop wash there. The NanoFly 2S, man, this quad is fun. And I'm not punching it right now just because, you know, I don't really want to, uh, kill the battery. I just want to be able to fly and see how these goggles do. I'm curious about what the DVR looks like. The colors look pretty good on this camera. I think it's the uh, Cadex Ant, if I remember correctly. Super fun flying around the backyard. Thank God it's not raining right now. You can tell it's full winter time. The witch's fingers are out. This battery may be on the, the last part of this battery. Try not to crash in a puddle of water. Yeah, this battery's kind of tanking. So at the very bottom of my screen, I need to adjust my goggles, but I can see it's kind of hard to see like my battery voltage down at the bottom left. Maybe because my goggles are sitting high on my face, but the horizontal lines going back and forth too. Like what you see right there, that's from the VTX. That's not the, the SkyZone 04X Pros. But look at that color pop. 
And part of that is the vivid setting inside the sky zones. That's pretty cool. This quad will really go fast. Like I just, I have the camera all the way down too. I can probably run this battery down to like 6.8, 6.8 volt. But you know, your resting voltage, once you land, your voltage is gonna go a little bit up from what you see on the screen. So I was talking about that to somebody the other day. I guess if it was full out raining, we'd probably just fly under the deck here and do some figure eights. Oh man. Oh, that's it for that battery pack. Let's go ahead back to the bench now. Let's talk about these goggles on the bench and uh, let's give a little final impressions about the O4X Pros. Thank God it's not raining. <laughs> Press again to stop the video and we're good okay that was a lot of fun man it's it's been a minute since we had a pair of analog goggles to review on the channel because recently it's been hd zero it's been walk snail it's been dji and it's all about hd it must get kind of annoying to people who still have a whole garage full of analog quads like if you're not ready to switch over if you already if you're flying both these would be a good pair of goggles if you don't mind spending five hundred dollars on analog goggles um, if you want like some of the best goggles that you can possibly get for analog quads these are super nice oled screens they're super bright the colors i was commenting while i was flying like how bright the greens look you go back and look at that dvr it's kind of like what i was seeing but it looks better inside the screens uh, on the oleds i also think like um, negative two to, I think it was negative two to positive six or the other way around. Uh, that's a pretty decent focal adjustment point. Um, and the IPD range is good too. You also, again, like want to, you want to format your SD card to fat 32. Um, and I'm able to get really nice video out of, uh, my DVR. That's the other thing about the sky zones. I feel like the, the DVR is superior to pretty much any other like analog goggles out there on the planet um super nice yeah fan control speed here it's got kind of a matte finish on these it feels different than my o30s they had kind of a gloss finish and i, I think eventually they're going to come out with different colors so i'd like to have a pair of red ones um if sky zone wants to send me a red one but i also like the fact that they're expandable to dual modules if you want to for extra uh penetration for getting a, the perfect signal back to your quad that's going to help you out a lot give you four antennas on here put another steady view on this side and that's going to be super nice but it's a nice pair of goggles and the other thing is they 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 don't have like i don't have any light leak so when i put these on from side to side with the stock foam faceplate i have no I have no light leak at all. And my DJI goggles, my DJI goggles too, I usually have light leak somewhere down in this area. Um, so however this faceplate is, it's I don't know if the, the angles change from my O3Os, but I feel like these goggles are made just a little bit smaller than some of the other goggles out there. Like the Ishin goggles have a pretty wide faceplate, but they also do have different size faceplates for uh, making it a little larger or a little smaller. So you can, you can swap that as, those out. And mine came with two different faceplates in the box. And that's what the other faceplate is, just a little bit wider and larger. Um, but I'm going to stick with the smaller version here because it feels good. Um, and I actually like this color better than my other O4X goggles with that sort of gunmetal look. This is more of a, a blacked out uh, kind of old school look, but with a nice new polish on here. So I'm going to stick with these for a little while. And I think that coming up in, in new reviews, you're going to be seeing me use these um it, maybe instead of my o3o's these might finally break me off my o3o's after like nine years but you know i was telling someone the other day like um you know i i've had all kinds of different analog goggles out there and fat sharks included i purchased fat sharks i never purchased a pair of sky zones because they always sent them to me for free um and i just use what i like okay so it's not about what i get for free or what i buy it's about 
what I like better. Um, I'm not sponsored by Sky Zone. Uh, I do get their goggles for free, but I don't get paid to make videos. I might get a kickback if I'm, I have an affiliate link in this video. I'll put my top three Sky Zone goggles right now in there for, you know, shameless plug. Um, it helps the channel. But these, these were my favorites because the DVR are superior. The screens look great. Um, the Fat Shark, the most recent Fat Sharks have OLED as well. They also look great. Um, but these, this particular company, the O3Os that I have, they, they're still working after nine years. Some of my original Fat Shark Dominators, I had them for about eight months to nine months. Um, my, my first or second pair. And they just, the screens cut off one day and they didn't come back on ever again. Um, and that was the thing with Fat Sharks a while back. Like, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Sometimes the screens can just die inside the goggles and then your goggles are kind of done. You can contact the manufacturer and try to send them back for repair. And sometimes they'll just take them in for repair and fix them, send them back to you. Um, and, and it may have been a malfunction hardware wise inside the goggles. So uh, I would recommend, again, with these goggles, first thing I would do is get a 4S battery. Uh, I always use Lion packs because they last a super long time. I love having the weight of the battery off my head. Also, it makes these feel a lot lighter. And the second thing you need to do is update your antennas. I'll try to find some really awesome antennas, um, like some Lumineer AX long range antenna. I'll put a link down below for this one, super tall. Um, great distance and penetration. These, you know, these I've been out like, you can go out like three miles with these. Um, and the TVS antennas, I don't know that they sell these anymore, but these were also great back in the day. I just still have one left. Um, probably came off a quad, but both right hand circular polarized to match up with the quad. So whatever your quad you're flying, if it's left hand or it's right hand, match up those goggles or those antennas up to your goggles. So very important that your, your quad antennas match whatever you're flying on your goggles. Uh, I know some beginners have made that mistake before flying left hand circular polarized goggles and you've got right hand on your quad. So um, even if it's dipole, uh, just make sure that you're matched up, okay? All right, so I appreciate you for watching my channel. If you want to subscribe or become a Patreon for all this kind of laid back information that we give on the channel and reviews and honest reviews, and you appreciate what we do here, please do subscribe and uh, become a Patreon. I'd appreciate it. Merry Christmas, everybody, and uh, I will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.